I want to point something out now that may hurt your head a little bit. See all the knobs, buttons, and sliders that are all over the place inside of Thor? There are tons of them, huh? I remember the first time I saw Thor before it was released, a month before we started the factory sound bank design project. I remember being overwhelmed when I saw how much there was when you opened it up to reveal the programmer. I thought to myself, this is going to be a lot to wrap my head around. However, the headache really began when I realized the buttons were only a small part of the power of Thor. The modulation routing table, which you've seen me access a little bit up until this point, is where the real control comes in. Click to open a source. See the little drop down menu there? Okay, within the modulation routing table, it's possible to virtually link tons of components within Thor to other parts of Thor. It's even possible to link parts of Thor to other devices using the control voltage and audio outputs on the back of Thor. The modulation routing table is also where you make the rotaries, buttons, mod wheels, and aftertouch features active within Thor as well. Not only can you enable them, but you can have them control multiple functions at the same time, for example. In this introductory modulation routing table exercise, let's try enabling a button together. First, I'm going to set up a modulation envelope to control the oscillator 1 pitch and give it a strength of 59. You're all welcome to experiment this value on your own, but you will find that amounts, unless they are just on and off functions, should in most cases be modest. Experimentation, though, is the best way, right? Next, I'm going to set up the button 1 modifier as my scale. What this means is that it determines overall how much of the mod envelope will have power. I'll give it its destination over 100 because a button is simply on and off. Let's set up the modulation envelope now. Turn the attack up, the decay up. It doesn't really matter. This is an experiment. Now, I'll turn the modifier on, or button 1, and let's play. Okay, it's bending along with the modulation envelope. The attack is raising the pitch as I play the key. The decay is lowering it. Now, if I press the button again, no more modulation envelope. I can also replace the button. Let's try it out. Velocity. When velocity is enabled as the scale, the harder you hit a key, the more modulation routing table will come into effect. See, if I play a lower velocity, it's more subtle. If I play a harder velocity, meaning hitting my keyboard harder, the modulation is much more severe. Let's take it a step farther. How about we enable the delay? Then we'll also set up to where the velocity also determines how strong the feedback of the delay is as well. Let's try it out. I'll set the MIDI velocity as the source, then the delay feedback as the destination. I'll give the MIDI velocity a much higher amount just so you can hear the difference. Okay, if we hit it really hard, meaning the velocity is at, at its highest, the delay will go non-stop. If I play at a lower velocity, it will tone it down for me a little bit, so it's adjustable, you know, so it's not on and on and on on echo, right? What's interesting here is that I'm tying the velocity to a lot of different functions. Just imagine how far you could go with one button and all the destinations it could be routed to, or how many slots it could be set to scale. And remember, there are still several forms of modifiers that can be used in conjunction simultaneously with the velocity, aftertouch, mod wheel, and more. All right, in the next video, we're going to talk about the global envelope and also how to envelope loop as well and what that's all about. See you in the next video.